Hi there. I've been growing pinks for about five years and a lot of that time I've also been making my own hybrids. And a lot of people have asked me how to pollinate the flowers. I've showed a lot of people how to do it in person and explained it as best I could on the internet. But it's a lot easier to just show you how to do it because the flowers aren't your typical kind of flower that you see in botany class with the obvious parts there. So let's get to it. So let's start off just by looking at a pinguicula flower. This is Anpa C. It's one of the more Nensis varieties. And uh, let's zoom in to get a better look. So here's the entrance to the flower. And if you look here, on the top, there's a little dark area right there. It looks like a little curtain hanging down. That's the stigma. That's where the pollen is received. So then the question will be, where is the pollen? And in a lot of flowers, the pollen is out on anthers. And like on lilies, for example, it's really easy to see. It comes off, it stains your shirt. Uh, on a pinguicula flower, it's not the same. So I'm going to actually sacrifice this flower. And we're going to take a look inside. So here's the flower. And I'll, I'll also mention that some people actually... Uh, use this method to pollinate their pinguiculas. It might be easier at first. So what I'm going to do is hold the top two petals. This is up. So I'm going to hold the top two and grab the bottom three and I'm just going to rip the flower open. So let's rip it open and see what we see. So, uh, where's my pointer here? So there's that little stigma right there, that dark bit, and then behind it you can see that there are, are two little organs. So one there and one there. And on the end of there, it's kind of hard to see because the stigma is folding over them. But that's where the pollen is. The, the anthers are there. We can pull it back maybe uh, and see. Yeah, you can see it there. So I'm going to run through and I just picked up a whole load of pollen. So like I said, you can actually do this method because if you pull the bottom off your flower all the important parts are still left on the stem there's the stem there and the our goal is to get the pollen from there onto here but on a different flower because they don't self-pollinate but i can do it pretend this is another flower see how it just sticks onto there the surface is such that it grabs the pollen it grabs it off of the toothpick or a bird's beak or whatever it happens to be on. So if I hadn't pulled this flower off and if I had pollinated it with pollen with another flower from another flower, then this would be a successfully pollinated flower, maybe. So first let's talk about what we need. So we need either a fine brush like this or a toothpick. And uh, I'm going to use the toothpick. Let's, let's talk about the brush for a moment. I normally use a brush. If you're going to use a brush, get a really small one and uh, the smallest you can find. And spend a little extra money to get one made of actual animal hair. Some of them are made of, uh, of plastic bristles and those tend to lose their shape really fast and splay out so that you can't get it into the flower. And also, I don't think the plastic actually holds the pollen as well. Uh, they're made to hold paint, not pollen. So just because the animal hair is a little bit rougher, it will hold onto that pollen a lot better. And the other thing you can use is a toothpick. You can see I've painted the end of this. Let's do that. I've painted the end of it black. And the reason I did that is because it's a lot easier to see the pollen against a black background than it is against normal toothpick color. So the plants I've chosen today are Weiser or Weezer as some people say, and that's a hybrid between Ehlersy and Morinensis. Normally I don't pick a hybrid as my first choice uh, because some of the hybrids are already sterile, but Weiser is a really fertile one and it's been both the seed parent and pollen parent for a lot of really nice hybrids that I've done. So uh, I'm going to do that. And the other one is ANPA or A-N-P-A-C and uh, ANPA stands for Andrei Pavlevich, and there were several collections by this guy, so there are four Anpas out there. So even though this is a generally a fertile species, you never know if you're actually going to get pollen or not out of a flower. 
Sometimes it just depends on uh, weather conditions. If things are a little warm, they sometimes don't do anything. Um, in the fall, things have cooled down and uh, the plants are looking great, so I'm pretty optimistic here. So I'm gonna take this, first thing I'm gonna hold the bottom of the flower, and I'm just gonna take this little toothpick and stick it in, and then pull it up slightly, angle it up slightly, because the pollen is back behind there. And it looks like I have no pollen. Let's try it again. Nope, I did get some. So you can see it on the end there. Uh, just a little bit of pale pollen. So let's get that out of the way and bring in our other flower. And so now, if you look in the center, let's pull in a little bit actually. Whoops, sorry about that. So now you can really clearly see the, the stigma. That's the little curtain that's hanging down in the middle of the flower. So I'm just going to take it and make sure the pollen is up on the, on the toothpick and just put it in there. And you can see that it, it accepted it. it. It rubbed off onto the, onto the stigma. So now, since we're here, let's take advantage of this uh, form of the flower. Let's go in and see if we can get some pollen. Pretend it's a hummingbird's beak. It just let go of its load of pollen and now it's coming back out and it's sticking. But there, we got pollen. Probably could get more, but that's okay. I'll do a little reparative uh, pollination later. Sorry about all the... So let's now... Sorry about the lighting, but I'm going to just go do the same thing here. Just go right into that flower and pull it out. And actually I ended up getting a whole bunch more pollen. So since we did that, let's go back to Anpa and give another little load of pollen. All right, so this one has a pretty good chance of, of uh, getting fertilized. What we'll do is watch it and in a day or two, if it's fertilized, it'll probably fade rather quickly. Now the last thing that's really important to do is to label what you just did. So since I pollinated the Anpa C, I'm going to take this and just do times, actually I don't say times, I say by, and the light is horrible. But anyway, that says by Wazer. And I'm just going to stick it in right by the flower that I, you can't see it, but anyway. I just put it in right by the flower that I pollinated. So I know that if that takes, um, it's because, let's pull it back. I know that if that takes, then this is the, uh, the pollen that's in that flower. So if you're successful, and there's no guarantee that we were, the result when the flower drops will be this swelling ovary. So this isn't actually that huge. I don't think I actually pollinated this. It'll be fairly obvious. It'll be, it'll get like half again as large as this. And you'll want to watch it carefully because after a couple weeks, it'll start to get pale and it will split. And sometimes it can split before it actually turns pale. So you want to watch it like a hawk uh, because if it splits and you don't see it, you can lose your seed.